Hi there, welcome to BA Consulting Pro and welcome to this series DP600. In this series, we are going to talk about everything you need to clear your DP600 exam. In my last video, I talked about how you can ingest data in Microsoft Fabric Platform using data flows. And in this video, we are going to talk about how you can do the same using notebooks. Notebooks provides a great way to transform your data as well as to ingest in the lake house. Notebooks are specifically very helpful when you deal with big data. Usually, if you have a small scale of data, you can use the data flows, but it becomes messy when it comes to the big data. So that's why we are going to use the notebooks over here, where you are also going to get a flexibility of choose language of your own. For example, you can choose Scala, R, Python, PySpark, etc. And we are going to use PySpark. Please do note that this tutorial is not for language specific, but it's a way to show you how you can ingest data using notebooks and can transform it in Microsoft Fabric platform. So if you would like to know more, please stay tuned with me till the end of this video and I'm going to let you know everything about it. Now, what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Before we move further, if you are over here for the very first time, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell icon so that you always stay updated with our latest contents and videos. Now, as you can see that on your screen, I have already logged in into SNPs Data Engineering Workspace. Over here, I'm going to create first one workspace and I'm going to give it a name, DP600 Ingest Data. That's what I'm going to give it a name. But if you would like to change it, you can change it. It's totally up to you. But make sure whenever you are creating this workspace, it should be on your Fabric capacity. Otherwise, it's not going to work. If you haven't enabled Microsoft Fabric on your tenant level, then you cannot use it. You cannot create any of the Fabric items. So please make sure that you have enabled it. Either you are using trial or you have already Fabric capacity based license. If you would like to know more about it, please check out our previous videos where I have explained to you that how you can enable Microsoft Fabric in your organization. Now, you need to simply apply it. It's going to create basically one workspace where we are going to create all the Microsoft Fabric related items. Now, here we are specifically going to talk about the lake house, that how we can ingest data in the lake house and can transform this. There are basically two ways, if you would consider. In the traditional way, we used to do the ETL, that is extract, transform, and load the data. Where first we used to get the data from the data sources, then we used to transform on the way, and then load the data finally. But since the inception of cloud technologies, it has been changed to ELT. And what does that mean? Well, in ELT, first you extract the data, then you load the data into your destination, which is our lake house right now, and then we transform it. It's a much faster way to do all the calculations, all the transformations and everything. That's why we are going to use here ELT and we are going to use the PySpark notebooks over here. So once you come over here, first you have to create a lake house and I'm going to give it a name, demo by spark ingestion data you can give it any name as per your own desire but please give it a meaningful name so that you can understand what is all about so i'm gonna click on this create button over here it would take a couple of seconds and you can see that now i have created my fabric lake house over here within a second and as you can see on your screen you can get the data in your lake house via different ways and here you can see that you can use the data here you can see that you can ingest data using data flows gen 2 you can also use the pipeline in the pipeline you can use the data flows or the note notebooks then you have notebooks and you can also create the shortcuts over there as you can see that successfully created sql analytics endpoint as well so if you would like to switch in the future to sql endpoints you can do that that's going to help you basically when you have to edit the data model or you need to create some measures etc but that's a part for any other video not for this one but do remember in your exam you may ask this question that if you have to edit your data model then how you are going to do that for that you have to switch over to your sql endpoint otherwise you cannot do that secondly in your exam they can also ask you what are the default items or the elements that's been created over here when you hit the create lake house button and here you can see that by default table and the files is going to be created over there it's basically two folders and here you would get the multiple options inside it so please pay attention whenever you are creating any of the items over here that's going to help you to crack your exam as well now what we are going to do we are going to simply create a subfolder over here where i'm going to load my all the data so i'm going to call it raw data folder and simply click on create so over here, we are also going to use Microsoft documentation. I'll also provide you some of the important links in the description section. So please don't forget to check them out. 
Now we have created our row folder over here, but we also gonna need ABFS path. So for that, you have to come here and click on properties. And here you would see that there are two paths. One is the URL for this folder if somebody wants to connect directly over here. Otherwise, there's an ABFS path. In my previous videos, I have already explained what is ABFS path. Basically, ABS, ABFS is Azure Blob Storage File System or Azure Blob File System. You can say that. So you have to copy this and keep it with you because we are going to use it inside our PySpark code when we have to load the data in this folder. So I'm going to just save it somewhere. I have already saved it. Now, as soon as you do that, after that, what you have to do, you have to create a notebook. And why notebook? Because notebooks are the way that we can run our code, where we can ingest the data as well as we can transform the data. We are going to split this into different uh, cells. But if you would like to do in one cell itself, you can do that. But let's see how we are going to do that over here. On the top ribbon, you can see that open notebook. So either you can open already one existing notebook or just click on this drop down button and click on this new notebook. Now you can see that I have my notebook over here and on the top you would see there's a lot of other options in terms of languages that you can use in Fabric Notebooks. So Fabric Notebooks provides a flexibility that you can use Python, Scala, SQL or even R language. So whichever language fits best for you, you can use any of the languages to transform your data. We are going to stick with PySpark over here and now let me just copy and paste one code over here. Now try to understand what this code is doing over here. So if you will see this code is first getting three parameters or three variables where I have uh, these three values over here and then I'm creating a path over here. Basically I'm constructing a connection path over here and then printing this path. Then it's going to read parquet data from Azure blob storage path. So that ABFS is Azure blob storage path or Azure file system. That is something that you should know about. So here, if you are going to run this one, it's going to take a couple of seconds because it's going to mount and then it's going to process your data over here. So this is not my path or something. It's provided by Microsoft. So don't worry about that. You are also going to get all the links in the description section. Simply, once you paste your code and this just saying that from where you are getting the data over here. So just hit this run button and it's going to take some time. So please hold on and you can see that it's processing now. Over here, in this particular episode, I'm just trying to tell you that how you can ingest and transform the data using notebooks. It's not a language specific tutorial or anything, but I'm trying to let you know that what are other questions that you can face in your exam and you cannot clear your exam unless you are going to practice. Trust me, practice is very important and that's how you are going to get to know like what are the other items, how you create any item, what are the language options do you have over there, what is ABFS, etc. So everything you will get to know over here. Now you can see that it's returned me the path, so I have my path over here. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to create another code cell over here and where I'm going to paste my another code. So this is the code. Here you can see that my file name is yellow taxi and this is getting over here, but I have to generate one complete output path. That means where I'm going to store my data inside my lake house. What I'm trying to do over here, I'm trying to get the data from Azure file storage system and I'm going to read 1000 lines of data from there. Once it's completed, then I'm going to store it into my row folder. In order to store in row folder, if you remember, we copied one properties path from there. Now that properties path we are going to use over here over here basically that you can see till there so let me copy my path back over here and i'm gonna paste it now this is going to be my complete path where i have to basically load my data and then you can see that i'm loading only the 1000 rows of data once it's done simply hit on this run cell button again it would take some time so please be patient over here and it's running you can see that all right guys, as you can see that it has been run, but there's some diagnostics is appearing. Time skew for job 11. So it took a bit of time, but let's see whether our data has been loaded or not. For that, what you can do, you can simply come here and you are going to refresh it. Now you can see that my yellow taxi data is already there. So the data is over here, which is success and it has been loaded, but I would like to see the preview of this data, which I cannot see as of now, right? So we are going to proceed further, then we are going to see how we can view this data. So for that, I'm going to create a new code cell over here and I'm going to paste this code. So this code is basically going to transform the data. Till now, what we have done, we have just 
took the data from Azure Blob Storage and we have loaded into our row folder, which you can see that it has been loaded. Now we would try to transform this data. So once I do this, then I have to simply run this code and it would again take a couple of seconds. So let's see. It's going to also display us some of the filter data over here. But please do note that right now I'm not doing any optimization of this code. But when you are working on large scale data, then you may need to perform the optimization as well, which we will do as well. So you can see that now I have data because I was just getting one row over here. That's why it's just displaying the one row of data. But now let's try to do some of the transformations as well in a sense that it is highly optimized. And for that, we can use the V order as well. We can apply some other automatic optimization technique over here. Microsoft Fabric Platform offers a great way to optimize your transformation of the data and loading the data. That's what we are also going to apply over here. So for that, what I'm going to do again, I'm going to create a new code cell over here. So it's sometimes difficult to find the code cell. So let me just do over here. So you can see how the jobs are running if you would like to. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to hide it, hide output, and then my new code cell is over here. So don't worry about that. You may also face the same challenge when you have to try to find out the uh, cell over there or you have to create a new code cell and here I'm again gonna put my new code now since you have seen the output where we are just looking at one row but now we have to also optimize our code whenever you are working with the big data if you are not gonna optimize then you may face a lot of serious optimization challenges for that we are gonna create a new code cell and here we are gonna post this data where you can see that I'm enabling the V order as well as I'm enabling the automatic delta optimize right once you are gonna run that this is basically gonna optimize this data set now, I have done that. It would take a couple of seconds to show us the data and it's already done and this has been optimized and it is working much faster than the previous one. Even you are considering the milliseconds part when you are gonna work on a large scale of data, then you would realize what is the difference over there in the optimization and without optimization. So please always optimize your code. And in your exam, there can be another question on this that what is V order, why do we use it, how we can enable automatic delta optimize. So this is going to be the another part. Now we are going to analyze the data using SQL queries. And in order to do that, you have to again come down here and create a new code cell, which is over here and just type this data here. What I'm going, I'm taking the data table name, which is yellow taxi. You can see that there is my taxi data. So if I'm going to refresh it, you may see one table inside it. Uh, okay. It's going to be here. Let me just refresh it. And here you can see my taxi data is there, but I have also one with the optimized one, which I created using this code over here. So now we are going to take this table name from here. Then we are going to create temporary SQL table. Once we have that, we are going to run our SQL query and we are going to select all the data from this table. So you have to simply run this button and you are going to get top 10 results over here. And here I have my top 10 results. Now, you have seen that this one has been run on unoptimized data, but what we have to do, we have to also run this on optimized data. So that was the difference I was talking about. Whenever you are going to run any code on the optimized data and non-optimized data, then you are going to see the real difference between them. So let's run now on this optimized one. You can see that you now I'm considering the table yellow taxi optimization one. And if I'm going to run this cell over here, it's going to be very quicker than the previous one. And here you can see that it took just two seconds. However, it took three seconds over here. This is the main difference of running your codes on optimized versus non-optimized tables. So always optimize your data transformation whenever you are doing that or whenever you are working with any of the delta tables, etc. Or basically, whenever you are working anywhere, whether you are working on Power BI items, fabric items, lake house, data warehouse, anywhere, consider the best practices and the optimization ways over there. I hope guys, now you have a clear understanding about how you can ingest data in Microsoft Fabric Platform using notebooks. In this video, we discussed how you can ingest the data using notebooks into your lake house and then how you can transform that. Not only that, we also discussed how you can optimize it using V order and Delta Optimize. At last, we also view our data or visualize the data using SQL queries. If you have any question and concern, please do let me know in the comment section. And if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up and also share with your friends. Lastly, if you are looking for any of the training programs, PL300, DP500, DP600 certification trainings, please do let us know. You can connect with us at connect.viconsultingpro.com. Till then, keep learning and I'm going to see you in the next video.